Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it's my joy to welcome you to this service of worship at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We're so grateful that you are here, and we'd love the chance to get to know you a little bit better. So if you would, take a moment and either click the link that's in this video description or scan the QR code that will show up on your screen in just a few moments. There you can let us know that you're here and also let us know how we can be praying for you. Now, I invite you to take a big deep breath as we welcome God's presence for this special service of All Saints Sunday. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my joy to get to lead us in prayer today. Will you join me now as we go before God in prayer? Holy and loving God, we thank you for gathering us together today in your name. God, we thank you that you are big enough that you can gather us together in spirit even when we are apart physically. God, today on All Saints Day, we thank you for the privilege of being part of your family. God, we thank you for the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us and for all those that'll come after us. Lord, sometimes we feel unworthy to be a part of that communion. 
And yet, God, through the work of Jesus Christ, you are sanctifying us to be a part of that great cloud of witnesses. Lord, All Saints Day is one of the days that we remember the mystery of what it is to be a Christian. There's so many tensions in our faith, joy and sorrow that go hand in hand. Lord, right now as we look around the world, there's so many causes for sorrow. God, we don't know what to make of the conflict in Israel right now. And Lord, we don't see what the solution is. But God, we know that you are somehow at work. And we ask that you will be present to all of the people in this conflict and that peace will somehow come. Lord, there's people that we love who are sick and are perhaps even nearing the end of their lives. We know that those who are close to death are closer to you. And yet for those of us who will be left behind, it is hard. Lord, we ask for your mercy in all of those places where your healing is needed. God, we pray also for this community. We pray that here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church, we would be growing in your likeness and coming to know you more fully. We pray for Wilmington, that this would be a place that is closer to the kingdom of God. Lord, there are so many individual burdens and concerns that we have on our hearts. So God, we lift them up to you now, either out loud or in our hearts. God, we thank you that you not only hear our prayers, but you listen to them. And when we draw near to you, you draw near to us. Lord, we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we transition now into a time of reflection and generosity, I'd like to remind you of a few ways that you can always give to the ministry of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. You can give your gift through the mail, through our website, wrightsvilleumc.org, and also through our cell phone app. Let us now continue to worship God. kids, I'm Pastor Julia. Today is a really special and exciting day at church, and that's because today is something called All Saints Day. Do you know what a saint is? Well, a saint is someone who, during their life, was close to God and loved other people for God. So today in our worship service, we are gonna remember these saints and we're gonna light candles to celebrate them. You know, All Saints Sunday is kind of complicated. It's happy because we're remembering people that we love, people who loved God and were important to us. But it's also kind of sad because usually the people that we're remembering we're remembering because they died. And so we don't get to see them anymore and spend time with them. And that's really hard. You know, this is something that's kind of cool and a little weird about being Christians and being a part of the church is when somebody dies, we still know that we're going to see them again, but it isn't gonna be in this life, I know. It's really confusing and complicated. So we're sad because they aren't with us anymore,
but we're also happy because that means that that person that we love is closer even to God and that one day we'll all be together again. You know, a couple of years ago, my grandpa died and it's been really sad. I miss him a lot. And there's a lot of times that I wish that I could talk to him. But at the same time, I know that he's with God now. And I know that I'm going to see him again and that he'd be really proud of me. You know, I'm actually wearing a stole that was his because he was a pastor too. When we're in the church, we're part of a really big family. Sometimes it's called the cloud of witnesses or the communion of saints. And that means that we have family members that we don't even know about, that we haven't even met yet, that are all a part of this big family of God. And sometimes here on earth, we lose people and it's really hard and sad. But since we're Christians, we also know that we'll see them again. All Saints Day is a confusing day. It's a day where we're happy and it's a day that can be really sad. I wonder, how are you gonna celebrate All Saints Day today? Let's say a prayer together. God, thank you for making us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for all the saints that go before us. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today is All Saints Day, as we've already mentioned. And our scripture for today comes from John chapter 11, beginning in verse 17. It's the story of Jesus bringing Lazarus back to life. Um, it's a little longer than our normal uh, biblical stories that we read um, before the sermon, but it's such a great story. I really want you to hear this. So um, listen up as uh, we reread John chapter 11, verses 17 through 44. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Mary and Martha to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And, who, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, Already there's a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. 
I knew that you always hear me, but I've said this for the sake of the crowd that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks that you can unbind us even from death. Lord, we thank you for those whom we have loved, who are now in your heavenly arms. And we ask that you will once again help us in our grief. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, today is a very special day. It's All Saints Day. The day when we remember those church members who have died in the last year and moved their membership from Wrightsville United Methodist Church to the church triumphant in the heavens. I suspect all of us have experienced one way or another the death of a dear saint in our lives. Maybe it wasn't in 2023, but maybe a year or two or even 20 years ago. Well, on this morning, more than any other Sunday out of the year, we are mindful that the church universal is larger than those of us who worship together. We are mindful that the church is even larger than all the disciples across the globe. This morning, on All Saints Sunday, we acknowledge that the church is comprised of believers who not only span the globe, but also span the centuries, and that we're never far removed from those saints who have attained their glory ahead of us. That knowledge, however, does not make us immune to the pain that sometimes accompanies this day. Although we believe, still we grieve. On days like this, I remember going fishing with my grandfather. I remember my Nana's biscuits and gravy. And of course, I'll never forget walking off the golf course with my dad for the very last time. And so, in so many ways, this day is bittersweet for many of us, just as it is for Mary and Martha in this morning's Bible story. This is a story that tugs at our heartstrings. Few here lack the experience to empathize with Mary and Martha as they weep at the grave of their brother Lazarus. In that, we share a common humanity that's not to be denied or suppressed, for although we believe, still We grieve. Sorrow and grieving are part of what it means for us to be human in this world. When death lays claim to someone we love, it brings us tremendous sorrow. Even Jesus wept at Lazarus' grave. In fact, here at the grave of Lazarus, the very one who could and would eventually resurrect him is still crying and angry and agitated all at the same time. And that's what death does to us. Of all our Gospels, none more powerfully communicates the message that Jesus is both fully divine and fully human. And here within the story of Lazarus, the divine Son of God, who will call a man back from the grave, is also the fresh and blood friend of Lazarus, who often visits this family and breaks bread with them in their home and shares a special intimacy with them. Within this story, Jesus, the divine Son of God, with power over life and of death, can still express the same emotions that all of us feel when faced with the death of someone we love. Anger, agitation, and deep, deep sorrow. And so even with our Lord and Savior, we share a common humanity that is not to be denied or suppressed, for although we believe, still We grieve. Our gospel writer paints a portrait of this graveside moment, a picture of anger and sorrow, frustration. But that's not the end of the story, because while we share this experience of identifying with Mary and Martha as they weep at the grave of their brother, our very presence here this morning is a testimony that we also identify with Mary and Martha's experience of new life that is made possible only through Jesus Christ. Together we share 
not just a common humanity, but a common eternity. For although we grieve, still we believe. As powerful as the story of the raising of Lazarus is on its own, it's important that we understand it within the context of John's gospel. You see, this miracle plays a very pivotal role. In a certain sense, the entire gospel has been preparing us for this very moment. As far back as chapter 5, Jesus heals a lame man at the pool of Bethsaida. It is the Sabbath, and so the Jewish authorities confront Jesus and call him out. Jesus explains to them that he's doing the work of the Father. Now, they're offended by his words even more than by his actions, as Jesus gives a very extensive explanation of who he is and what he's all about. Jesus tells them these words. He says, Just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whomever he wishes. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes has already passed from death to life. The hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. The hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and will come out. Now talk about your spoiler alerts. No one who'd been paying attention should have been surprised when Lazarus, who'd already been dead for four days, heard Jesus shout, come out, and then sure enough, walked right out of that grave. When Jesus calls Lazarus out of the tomb, Jesus validates the claims that he made earlier in chapter 5, that he embodies life itself and is superior to the forces of death and destruction. You know, just one chapter before this story of Lazarus in John chapter 10, Jesus proclaims that he is the good shepherd. He says that his sheep follow him because they know his voice. He says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. And that's what happens when he shouts to a sheep of his own flock. Come out, Lazarus. So friends, on this All Saints Sunday, we celebrate the lives of those who've not really perished because they heard the voice of the Good Shepherd and they responded to his call. They followed him into eternity. And so, although their bodies may have succumbed to the effects of cancer or heart disease or Alzheimer's or COVID or any other form of bodily decay, Nevertheless, they live eternally. And just as important, all of us who have responded to the call of Jesus will also live eternally with them. For although we grieve, this is what we believe. Remember what I said just a few moments ago? That together we share a common humanity that cannot help but acknowledge the pain and anger and frustration that we feel in the face of death. Well, even more importantly, we together share a common eternity because the good news of John's gospel is that our eternal life does not wait until our physical death. Our eternal life in Christ begins the very moment we respond to his call and place our trust in him. Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes has already passed from death to life. You see, sisters and brothers, the saints we celebrate this day are not lost to us. We are already joined together with the company of heaven because through Jesus, we share a common life with them, an eternal life. The resurrection of Lazarus was not just a blessing to Mary and Martha. It is an assurance for us that Lazarus is the walking, talking, clearly visible sign that Jesus surely is the source of life for all people in all times at all places who will simply trust in him. Jesus sets us free from death so that we might truly live here, now, and also forever. That day when Jesus raised Lazarus 
death and life were forever changed. Nothing was ever going to be the same again. Death would never again be what it once was, a final decisive ending. No, not anymore. Now it's more like, I don't know, like getting on the train to change terminals at the airport in Atlanta. It marks a change for sure, but it doesn't mark the ending. And that's why, although we grieve, still we believe. If you've heard the call of Christ, if you have committed to following Him and trusting in Him, then you've already passed from death into life eternal. We do not grieve as those who have no hope. Because we grieve as those who believe. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd now like to invite you to share with the words on the screen a litany for All Saints Sunday. Let us pray. Everlasting God, this day revives in us Memories of loved ones who are no more. What happiness we shared when they walked among us. What joy when loving and being loved, we lived our lives together. Their memory is a blessing forever. Months or years may have passed, and still we feel near to them. Our hearts yearn for them. Though the bitter grief has softened, a duller pain abides. For the place where once they stood is empty now. The links of life are broken, but the links of love and longing cannot break. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We see them now with the eye of memory, their faults forgiven, their virtues grown larger. So does goodness live and weakness fade from sight. We remember them with gratitude and bless their names. Their memory is a blessing forever. And we remember as well the members who but yesterday were part of our congregation and community. To all who cared for us and labored for all people, we pay tribute. May we prove worthy of carrying on the tradition of our faith, for now the task is ours. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We give thanks that they now live and reign with you. As a great crowd of witnesses, they surround us with their blessings. And offer you hymns of praise and thanksgiving. They are alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. Today we remember with gratitude the lives of the different members of Wrightsville United Methodist Church who have died in the last year, beginning with Irvin Aldridge. Barney Averett. Doug Buhite. John Braddy. Jean Colley. Bill Connors. Julie Green. Betty Gregg. Sarah Hedgepeth. Rick Keenan. Ingela Kirby.
Kathy Knapp. Frank Leek. Jane May. Isabel McClendon. Bill Merriman. Carol Mills. Bernie Nycannon. Don Regal. Herb Rohrer. and John Solano. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we give you thanks for the lives of each and every one of these. Lord, they were known by their families They were known by their church, but they were first known by you. And Lord, we know that you prepared a place for each and every one of them in your heavenly kingdom. And so while we continue to grieve, we still believe, knowing that their life goes on in eternity with you forever and ever. Amen. Oh, silent friend, your life is found descending. To dust returns your weary mortal frame. God, who before your birth called you to be, now calls you hence, his essence still the same. Oh, silent friend, your life in Christ is buried. For you he lived and died and rose again. Close by his side, your promised peace is waiting. Where for a throne, you shall with God remain. No silent friend, forgive us if we grieve you. Safe now in heaven, kindly say our name. Your life has touched us, that is why we mourn you. Our lives without you cannot be the same. Though silent friend, we do not grudge your glory. Sing, sing of joy, deep praises to your Lord. You who believe that Christ would come back for now celebrate that Jesus keeps his word. Although we grieve, we still believe. And so know that your loved one is living even now with God our Father our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer of life here on this earth and life in eternity. Amen. We are standing in the footsteps of those that went before and we will be reunited when we reach that other shore. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when
when the saints go marching in. For I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. And when the bells begin to ring, oh, when the bells begin to ring, Lord, I want to be in that number when the bells begin to ring. And when the stars begin to shine, oh, when the stars begin to shine, Lord, I want to be in that number when the stars begin to shine. Oh, when the band begins to play, oh, when the band begins to play, Lord, I want to be in that number when the band begins to play. Oh, when the same Go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in. Lord, I want to be in that number.